we continue with the example that uh, we were discussing in the last lecture that there is a tank and through the bottom of the tank the water is being drained out and the height of water in the tank is therefore changing with time our objective is to find out how the height changes with time now uh, we were discussing about what is the significance or impact of the unsteady turn that is retained or that should not be retained or should be retained is our doubt in the Bernoulli's equation. Now, if you try to approximate it in some way, see in engineering we try to get a feel of the order of magnitude. So, we may try to approximate it by a certain term which should be like our derivative of velocity with respect to time times some height. So, let us say that if this dv dt was a constant, if it was a constant, not that it is a constant, if it was a constant, it could have come out of the integral and then it, have, it would have been some equivalent constant dv dt times s2 minus s1. So, s2 minus s1 may be roughly like the height. If you take a streamline which is coming, uh, I mean which is which is just along the axis, then it is exactly equal to h, but you cannot just write it as some equivalent dv dt into h because v is changing with time in an unknown way. So, you do not have really an equivalent constant dv dt, but you may you may make a kind of approximation. You can say <coughs> that I approximate this dv dt with dv1 dt. Why? If you see that except for very close to the outlet, the streamlines are almost parallel to each other and when the streamlines are almost parallel to each other, it represents uh, a case when that V is not varying very much. See why V is varying? See there is a flow rate confined between these. So, when uh, the streamline, the distance between these two streamlines remains the same, you have say A1 V1 equal to A2 V2. So, A1 is like this, A2 is like this, both are like the as if cross sectional areas. Uh, with the streamlines as envelopes. In fact, you can have a large number of streamlines, their envelopes may look like an imaginary pipe or a tube that is known as a stream tube. So, it is a collection of streamlines uh, making an imaginary tube within which the fluid is flowing. So, if you consider such a tube, you can always see that the, the extent of that tube that remains almost the same till you come to the exit where it is really accelerating because now the area available to it is so small that it has to get adjusted to itself. So, when the area is very small and it has to get adjusted to itself, that is only a small portion in comparison to the tank uh, extent. So, if you approximate this dv dt with dv1 dt, it is wrong, but it will give us some picture or some idea of what is the effect of what is the impact of this term. So, if you make an approximation that this is equal to dv1 dt times h, you have to remember that both are functions of time, h is a function of time, v1 is also a function of time. So, if you write this equation in a bit different way, you can write say v1, v2 square minus v1 square by 2. <coughs> plus or minus g v1 minus v2 is equal to minus of okay and uh, g1 minus v2 is equal to h which is itself a function of time. Okay. So, these are valid locally at each and every interval of time, at that time you have a dv dt and you have an h. Now, if you try to compare different terms, say we want to compare this term with this term. So, if these two terms are compared, then uh, let us say this is uh, term A and this is term B. So, when can you neglect term B in comparison to term A, when you have this mod of this divided by mod of G H 
when this is much much less than 1 then b is much much less than a. So, if this is the condition well h is something which you do not uh, consider locally because this is like uh, h is always a constant I mean al always a local constant that means whatever h is a function of time here in term a same h is there in term b. So, uh, only that means you have uh, you are comparing d b d t with g. So, uh, the rate at which uh, the, the change of velocity of the free surface it is there uh, that is uh, it is a sort of acceleration if it is comparable with the acceleration due to gravity then you cannot drop this term and then you should retain this term at least frame a differential equation it, it cannot be solved analytically. But if this is the case which is true for most of the practical cases then it is possible to drop this term. The second important point is irrespective of whether you drop this term or not a 1 v 1 equal to a 2 v 2 is what you are always using. The reason is straightforward the origin of this does not come from steady flow although this is valid for steady flow it does not mean that it cannot be used for cases when the flow is unsteady because the fundamental way in which it was derived from what from the continuity equation first by dropping the partial derivative of rho with respect to time equal to 0. So, if rho is a constant partial derivative of rho with respect to time is 0 it may still be unsteady flow because the velocity may be function of time, but rho not being a function of time was the first thing to drop the first term in the continuity equation that derivative with respect to time. The for the other terms then what how we came up with this we integrated this uh, that differential form of the continuity equation and then if there say rho at the inlet and the exit sections are equal again if rho equal to constant that is valid then you have a 1 v 1 equal to a 2 v 2. So, a very important thing is for a 1 v 1 equal to a 2 v 2 to be satisfied it is not necessary that it has to be a steady flow only thing rho should not change that is a very important thing that we have to keep in mind. So, even uh, when uh, it, it when it is varying with time you can use that. Now, let us say that this is the case so that we can drop the term b. So, if we can drop the term b then you can write <coughs> v 2 square minus v 1 square by 2 is equal to g h. Now, what is v 2? Uh, you can express v 2 in terms of v 1. So, v 2 is v 1 into capital d square by small d square. So, it is v 1 square capital D square by small d square minus 1 by 2 is equal to g h. Okay. And the remaining work is very straightforward. You can find out. So, v 1 is of the form some constant into root 2 g h. <coughs> where that constant is basically d square by d square so minus uh, 1 by that. square root of that. See this gives a this this I mean th this gives a contradiction what is the contradiction? When small d is very small say so you consider the limit as small d by capital D tends to 0 that it is a very big tank of a large cross section area and there is a very small hole through which the water is coming down. Then how does this work? Yes? How does this work? C is almost 0. If C is almost 0 then V 1 is almost 0. I mean practically it is it is true that if it is a tank of very large area and if there is a very small hole 
the velocity at which the free surface is coming down is, uh, is not perceptible, it is very small. So that is okay. Let us not bother about that too much. Let us just uh, try to complete this one by writing this as minus dh dt is equal to c root 2 gh. Now if you integrate with respect to time, you can find out how h varies with t. This is a very simple work. Now try to relate this with a kind of again formula that you have used earlier in your studies. So let us think that this tank, uh, I mean this hole is not located here but located at the side, okay. That is this is a different example just I am drawing in the same figure to uh, save the effort. So let us say that now this height is h which is changing with time. So there is no hole here but there is some hole here there is a nozzle that is fitted and water is coming out, okay. So when you are doing that, the way in which most of you have done is like you have assumed the velocity that which the jet is coming out is root 2 g h. This is known as Torricelli's formula. So how you have arrived at that equation, you have used Bernoulli's equation between 1 and 2, at that time you were not very careful about whether they are along same streamline or not, just out of pleasure you applied between 2 points and then uh, when you applied between 2 points, uh, you put V1 equal to 0, you put P1 equal to P2, the difference between the two heights h and so V2 will come root 2 gh. So what are the approx what are the assumptions under which that is valid? That is not a very bad formula. Torricelli derived it long back. I mean, uh, in a historical perspective, it's a great development because nowadays we can speak big, big words, but the subject when it was fundamentally developed, this itself was not a very trivial matter to resolve. So then, when uh, Torricelli found out this expression, what are the assumptions in in which uh, the, this expression? you expect to work still. So one of the thing was taken as V1 equal to 0. That means V1 equal to 0 when? When capital D is much much greater than small d. So V1 is approximately tending to 0. The other approximations are that you are having a streamline like this with respect to which you have the points 1 and 2 and uh, the unsteady term does not appear in that analysis and it is assumed to be an inviscid flow. The greatest deviation from reality is because of the assumption of the inviscid flow. So that is one of the very important features that we have to keep in mind. So with that assumption, uh, this formula is not illogical but a very important thing is we must keep in mind that uh, some of those assumptions uh, are to be questioned. One of the important assumption is like capital D is much much greater than small d uh, which, uh, which, which is true if it is a very large tank and from that uh, there is a small hole through which water is coming out and the dropping of the unsteady term and uh, we have discussed that I mean when uh, how this unsteady term, this particular term uh, in what conditions it may be dropped or not. So this is a very simple problem but if you try to look into this problem very carefully it will give you a lot of insight on the use of Bernoulli's equation under different conditions and I would encourage you to think about it more deeply under what conditions uh, different terms are important in, in different ways, not just uh, satisfied with finding h as a function of time but to write the differential equation of maybe say v1 as a function of time in a very simple case and in the most general case and try to compare them that is what are the terms that are making them to be different. We will consider another example in the unsteady Bernoulli's equation, uh, in the use of the unsteady Bernoulli's equation that is uh, given by the next problem. <coughs> Let us say that you have two plates these are circular plates. So we have uh, solved problems with rectangular plates just for a change let us consider that it is a circular plate. So the, this is uh, 
like this plate is coming down with a uniform velocity v. Okay, and this is a circular plate. The radius of the plate is r, and say uh, the we are considering a coordinate system, the local coordinate as small r. So, small r is the local coordinate at a radius r. Now, with this, we are interested to see. So, the bottom plate is stationary, there is some water with rho equal to constant and when this plate is coming down what is happening? Water is squeezed out of the place because whatever water was there say originally this was B naught. So, B equal to B naught at time equal to 0, but as this is coming down this B is changing, B is decreasing. So, where will that water go? That water will be squeezed out radially to make sure that the continuity is maintained. Okay. So, we are interested to find out how the pressure varies with R. Assume in viscid flow and rho is constant that we have uh, already defined or we have already assumed. So, as we have seen that in, in, in all these cases it is important to get a feel of the velocity profile. So, if it is an inviscid flow the velocity variation over the cross section over, over the section is not there. So, the velocity is uniform over each section, but this uniform velocity is changing with radius. So, how you can find out it? You have to think that what is the rate at which this is pulling water downwards is the same rate at which it is being squeezed out. So, if you consider a local radius r, what is the rate at which this is coming down? So, when you write a 1 v 1 equal to a 2 v 2 question is how, how do you write v 1 v 2 a 1 and a 2? What is v 1? v 1 is the rate at which, so it is like an artificial flow imposed by the movement of the top plate. So, that flow velocity is given by v 1. So, what is that? a 1 into, so what is a 1? So, if you consider only up to a local radius of small r, so a 1 is pi into small r square. So, a 1 is pi into small r square, what is v 1? v 1 is v, because it is a uniform rate, this is, this is uniform, this is not a function of time, this is constant. Is equal to, what is a 2? 2 pi r into b, b is a function of time into v 2 or v as a function of r. Let us write v r just to emphasize that it is v at a radius r. So, you can write v at a radius r is equal to v divided by v r by 2 b. Okay. Okay. Now, so this is the velocity at a radius r. Next, we are interested to find out the pressure. So, if uh, we are satisfied with in visit flow and uh, rho equal to constant, we can consider a streamline that connects two points any two points say 1 and 2. So, the streamlines, how the streamlines will look? So, the streamlines will virtually look like this. So, the flow is being squeezed out in this way. So, that is how a streamline will look. So, let us take any two points located on the streamline and write the Bernoulli's equation between those two points located on this identified streamline. But because it is an unsteady flow, we need to retain the unsteady term in the Bernoulli's equation. So, P 1 by rho plus V 1 square by 2 
plus v v 1 is equal to p 2 by rho plus v 2 square by 2 plus g v 2 plus let us say that we apply that between two points one point is located at r equal to small r and another point 2 is located at r equal to capital R. Okay. So, when you have such a case, you are getting rid of many things. One is between the points 1 and 2, there is no difference in height. So, uh, this of course, if this gap B itself is narrow, then even if there was a change in height uh, because of uh, taking the points 1 and 2 not exactly along the same line that term itself is not that large, but uh, like if you take them along uh, the same horizontal line they are identically the same. Then uh, you, you are interested to find out P1 and P2 you know that P2 is the atmospheric pressure, so because it is it is at the exit plane. So uh, you are interested to write P1 minus say P2 is P atmospheric, P1 minus P atmospheric by rho is equal to, now V2 square minus V1 square by 2, so V2 square minus V1 square by 2 is V square by 4 V square into capital R square minus small r square, because V is having only these components, then plus this term, so by 2 will be there, right. So, 8 b square, then plus, let us calculate that third term. So, what is the partial derivative of V with respect to T? That is the partial derivative of V R with respect to T, that is the only V component that is there, which is a function of T here b is a function of t here. So, this will be minus v r by 2 b square into d b d t, right. And minus d b d t is equal to v. So, minus d b d t is equal to v, just like the previous tank problem that we were considering. So, this term becomes v square r by 2 v square. So, that you can substitute here and d s will be d r, because you have chosen your streamline in such a way that the change in s is like change in r. So, this is from integration from small r to capital R v square r by 2 v square dr, uh, very straightforward to complete it, it becomes v square <coughs> by 4 v square into capital R square minus small r square. So, at a given instant you can see the pressure at the radius small r is varying with time, because b is a function of time. So, this only at a given instant you can say. So, at different instants you have different values of b and you can find out what is the value of b at a given time, how? Because you know that dB dt is minus v. So, b equal to b naught minus v t. So, if you are given a particular time, so this will give you b is equal to b naught minus v t. So, if you are given a particular time, you can find out what is the v, what is the value of b at that time. Then you may substitute the value of b at that particular time to get the pressure at a radius. Okay. So, you can clearly see that the unsteady Bernoulli's equation, how it can be utilized.